Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel where we create apps using Flutter. Now, continuing on our social media app, we can now log in, post a message to the wall. And now let's finally allow the user to add a comment to the post. So in the last video, we left off with this profile page that we created and we can edit the user details. And now let's focus on adding a comment. So in your components, let's create a new file called comment.dart. And if you think about what we need in a comment, we need to have three things. I need to know the actual text for the comment, the user, and also the time stamp for the comment. So let's just require these. And let's just create a container here. And I'm just gonna make it really basic for now and we can decorate it a bit later on. So let's make the gray and also just the border radius, curve the corners. And in the child, I'm going to display it in a column. So I want the comment on the top and on the bottom, let's have the user and the time. Now for the user and the time, I'm going to wrap this in a row just so that I can put them side by side. And the middle text widget, I'm just going to use a little dot to separate it out. Awesome. So now that we've created our comment, let's go to our wall post. And we created this like button earlier. So now let's create a couple more methods. I want to have a adding comment method. And I also want to show a dialogue to allow the user to input a comment. So let's just start creating this out. Now, when I add a comment, I'm going to need to know the string for the parameter as comment text. And we're going to write the comment to Firestore under the comment collection section. Okay, so we have everything in the user's posts. And we can get to the document of this current post ID. And in individual posts, we will have a comment collection. And let's add a new comment. Now, when I add a comment, I want to add three important details about the comment, which is the text, the user that commented, and also the time. Okay, now when it comes to the timestamp, I'm going to show you this a little bit later on to format it nicely so we can just kind of display a nice date because otherwise it's going to tell us the year, the month, the day, the second, and hour, and everything. So I'll show you that a bit later on. Awesome, now we just got to fill out one more method, which is the dialog box. So when the user wants to add a comment, we're going to show a box to accept the user's input. So let's just show a quick dialog here. And let's just say add comment. And the most important thing here is a text field so that we can get the user input, which means we're going to need to come up to the top and just create a comment text controller real quick. Cool, and just give it to the text field. And now let's just decorate this just a little bit. Okay, so we need to have a couple buttons here. So we're going to need a save button and a cancel button. So let's just create a simple text button here. Now when it comes to the saving, let's go to the add comment and give it the text controller. And let's just call this button post. And we're going to do the similar thing for cancelling, except for the cancelling, we're just going to pop the dialog box. Cool. So now that we've got the method set up, let's turn our attention to the UI. And we're going to need to have a comment button, similar to how we have this like button. So in our wall post UI, you can see there's our like button. Okay, now I want to kind of restructure this UI. So what I'm going to do is this wall post is currently encapsulated entirely in a row, as you can see. So I'm going to change this actually to a column. Okay, and so if I save this, it's going to be everything in a column. And I'm going to grab the buttons here and actually put it below the below the wall post. And then in the overall column, let's change the cross axis alignment to be at the start. There we go. And then if you come to the buttons, I want to have some buttons side by side, which means this should be in a row as well. Okay, so let's grab this and I'm going to put it in a row. And this first section is for like. Let's have a similar section next to it for comment. And we're going to need to have a comment button. So similar to the like button, I'm going to come up to my components and create a new file called comment button. So this will just make our code a bit more cleaner by separating out the code into different files. 
So if you think about a comment button, now I want it to be a button, so it has to be a gesture detector. And we want to accept this on tap function. Right, so when we create this comment button, just give it the on tap. And for the icon, let's just have a comment icon grayed out. Awesome, come back to our wall post and we can now give it the comment button. And so when you tap this button, this is where we have to show the dialogue, right? That's this method here. Okay, and for the comment count for now, let's just put in zero. And just to see how this looks like, if I save it, right, there it is. Now I'm gonna come up to the row of buttons and let's put this to the middle. And I'm just gonna space this out a tiny bit. It's looking pretty good. And so if I click on this icon, then you can see this box comes up. And so now I can type stuff in. Okay, looking good. Now, just from the feel of it, I actually think we should swap these two buttons around. Okay, let's just test this just to make sure these methods are working fine. So if I add some comments, let's just make sure there's no issues. Now, one thing I noticed is the controller needs to be cleared. So every time we open up the box, it actually still has the previous message that we put in the text, text field. So if I hit the cancel button, of course, pop the box, but then let's also control clear the controller. Okay, same thing for the, for the button here. Let's add the comment and then let's clear the controller. So if I try this again, you can see there's nothing in there. And let's say we post something and the controller gets cleared, as you can see. But it looks like for the comment button, we should also pop it as well. We forgot to do that. Nice, everything's working fine. Sweet, which means if you actually come back to our console, let's just see if the comments are getting added. So we put a few comments just then. Now let's try to find that post. Yep, so this is the post that we just had and you can see there's a comment section here and those are the three comments that we just typed in. So everything's working fine. Sweet, now I just wanna clean up this UI just a tad. So I'm actually going to put the message above the user. I think that's more appropriate. So this entire thing is just called a wall post. And let's have the message on the top and the user on the bottom. Yeah, I think that looks a bit better. And let's just clean up this spacing. Cool, now everything's looking good. So below these buttons at the bottom of the wall post, we can now display the comments. So we're going to use a stream builder, of course. And so just before we build something, let's listen to this stream and we're going to listen for the user posts for this current ID. And we're gonna go to the comments and let's just order the time by the newest one showing at the top. Okay, so we're gonna say descending is true. Okay, sweet, so now that we have these uh, snapshots, let's first of all show the loading circle if there's no data yet. Cool, and then let's return a list view. Now a couple things is when you have a list view inside other parent widgets, it's a good idea to set this shrink wrap to be true. So this is for like net, this is for like nested lists. Otherwise your scrolling behavior is gonna be very funky. So same thing with the physics. I actually want this to be never scrollable. And for the children, let's grab the snapshot data and let's return the comments. Okay, so firstly, we're gonna have to get the comment from Firebase and then we're gonna return the comment in our UI. Cool, and you can see there's a bunch of squiggles everywhere because if you come to the end of this bracket, we're gonna convert this to a list because this is a list view. So let's just do that first. And now we can fill out the comment. So comment data, let's give it the comment text and then the commented by and then the time. 
Cool. Now, if you save this, we actually get an error for the timestamp. And I actually mentioned I was going to show you how to solve this earlier because a timestamp is actually not a string. As you can see, that's what it says here. So I'm going to create a helper method in a new folder. And this is just going to be a little, uh, little method to help format the date. So the reason why we're doing this is because the date, like a timestamp, is not a string. So it'll be like, if I get the timestamp of right now, it would be 2013, uh, May and 19th. But then it will, it will also tell you the hour, the minute, the second, millisecond and so on. So we don't want all that information. I just want to return it as a nice string. Maybe we'll just say the year, month and day. Okay, but let me show you how to do this. You'll get a better idea. So I'm gonna say format date. Yeah, we're gonna accept the timestamp. So as I mentioned before, the timestamp is an object we retrieve from Firebase. So to display it, let's convert it to a string. Okay, so like I said, I'm just gonna get the year, the month, and the day. You can go ahead and get the hours and seconds and whatever you want. So let's just grab the year, the month as a string, the day as a string. And then finally, I'm gonna put all this together combine it in kind of one nice date. Okay, it's separated by slashes. Or well, I should actually put the day first. And then it's going to recommend me to interpolate this. And then this is what we're going to return. So if I come back to my error here, it says timestamp is not a string. That's what it's saying. So we can now format this and give it our time and it's going to return a nice string. By the way, I want to call this format date not format data. So if I save this, then those are the three comments. We can see that we saw those comments in the Firebase earlier. So if I add a new comment, you can see it's actually working, which means all the functionality part is done. Now it's time for the fun stuff, which is just making the UI look pretty. So come back to my comment.dart file and let's clean this up and make it look nicer. So the first thing is I'm gonna add some margin just on the bottom though. And let's have some padding for the children. And this column, I want everything to be aligned to the start. And let's change up some of these colors, like the user and the time. I want this to be grayed out. Cool. Now, if I come back to my wall post, what color is this guy? It is white. So I actually want to make this gray 200. Yeah, the white is a bit too jarring. And I think we might need some space under the comments, under, under the buttons. Sweet, and that's pretty much it. Now, one last thing is because we actually have the date formatted now, let's actually include it for the wall post as well. So you can see here in the, in the wall post for the user, similar to how we did for the comment. I'm just going to copy this and show it in the wall post as well. Let's do the timestamp. And it looks like we didn't even create this parameter. So let's do that right now. Which means if I come to my home page, we need to give it a time. We can get the time of this post from Firebase and put it inside the format date method that we had earlier. And whoops, looks like I misspelled it. It's actually a capital S. Cool, and you can see there's the date, and that's looking pretty good. So that's how you add comments. Now, if you made it this far into the tutorial, great job, and leave me a purple heart in the comment so I know. But we're making some really good progress with our social media app, and so let me know what feature I should add next. And also, if you have any questions on understanding the code shown in my tutorial, then just comment below and we'll hang out there. So I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.